So we're going to go through quickly as possible um, the law of ten tribes. And first, you know, Isaac was the patriarch that established that the firstborn does not always inherit the promise. So here we have Judah who inherits the scepter promise. And although Reuben is the firstborn, Joseph inherits the promise. Now, if we want to look at this clearly, break it up. Joseph, and I'm not going to do a side by side and read the promise from Jacob and the prophecy of Moses. So again, we've done that. So, what I would just like to do is break up and give you the ten tribes. A, um, an overview of the ten tribes. We have Joseph who is considered Britain or Great Britain and Manasseh who is considered the United States and when you think about it you can ask the question why the nation grows so fast in such a short time, the Americas. Now, if you remember, we have um, in Great Britain, the lion who had two cubs. And one of the cubs was Canada and the other cub was the United States. The United States came from Ephraim. Because part of the prom promise, Ephraim was the younger brother, but remember, Jacob laid his hand on Ephraim to give him the blessing, and Joseph got angry and crossed the hands over so that Manasseh could get the blessing. By him crossing, his, having Jacob cross his hands over, that meant that Man um, Ephraim will still get the double portion, but it gives now Manasseh a chance to get, although he was still blessed, to get that first birthright blessing. That's going to come back to him. So that's why in ministry we talk about be careful of crossing your hands or having your hands folded or your legs folded or crossing the stream. If somebody's praying, you don't want to cross over them because it lessens their blessing. Amen? So, let's just read Genesis 48 and 5, the birthright double portion. Said Jacob, the two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee into Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. They were to be adopted as his own and to become the heads of separate tribes. Thus, one of the birthright privileges which Reuben had forfeited was to fall to Joseph, a double portion in Israel. Amen. Before we go on, let's just go back to God's promise to Abraham. People, I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. Genesis 17 and 6. 2. Places, the whole land of Canaan, where you now are, an alien, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you. Genesis 17 and 8. 
third present I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you Genesis 17 and 7 for the blessing I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you I will make your name great and you will be a blessing I will bless those who bless you and whoever curse you will curse I will curse and all people on earth will be blessed through you Genesis 12 2 through 3 so here um, God is letting Abraham know that he's, nations are going to come out of him okay and he's going to be a blessing to every nation under the sun amen and these are the important things that we just want to outline before we go on so here God's promise great nations in 12 2 to 3 and blessed so they're going to be fruitful in 17 and 6 and heirs in 15 and 4 from Sarah descendants as many as the stars in 15 and 5 and exceedingly numerous in 17 2 to be a blessing in 12 2 to 3 the descendants as many as the dust in 13 16 father of many nations in 17 and 5 the land in 12 7 and 13 14 through 17 lands from the river of Egypt and up in 15 18 land of Canaan in 17 and 8 others kings from me so he would have kings inside of him in 17 and 6 and an everlasting covenant God will be our God in 17 7 8 so this was the promise of Abraham that was passed on to Abraham Isaac and Jacob which Jacob's name turned into Israel so it's for the whole tribe of Israel including Judah because Judah was a part of the tribe of Israel before the separation after Solomon's death amen we can consider the Israelites land and sea dwellers and many of them were land goers but they were given promises when Jacob prophesied many of them about the gates of their enemies if you remember many people will hate them is what their father Jacob expressed in his prophecy. So when you look at a map of and, and let's look at this map. I'm going to bring this map up. seeing this is when you look at this map what you see is you see is how Britain Empire in the 1920s all that red section there that's Great Britain Australia parts of Africa and these are considered sea gates remember America came from Britain you know they had that civil war that they had to free us from um, the Britons so there was a strategic location for each one of these gates in Gibraltar from Spain the Americans had Puerto Rico the Panama the Canal, they had the Philippines, Guam, which was in the control of Cuba at one time. So 
when we talk about those gates, understand the gates are important. Those are port to gates. C gates, which allows people to enter and leave the land. And that's why we have to guard our borders and our gates. So, you see, um, America had some strategic locations for their gates to be protected. Amen. Now we're going to move into some slides talking about different seals and also maps when we can't find seals representing countries. Amen. We're going to talk about our home and that is um, Department of State, the United States of America. And what you see before you is a seal, our insignia or a symbol, whichever one you like to call it, but that's what it is. And I just want us to take it and if you notice it's our symbol is the eagle. And I want you to notice the eagle is carrying 13 arrows and 13 fruit berries. Okay? He has 13 stripes in this flag. And all of this is discussed in Joseph. And I, you can go back and read the prophecy and you'll see what I'm talking and what I'm referring to. Joseph is a fruitful broth, even a fruitful broth by a well, whose branches run over the wall. The archer has sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. And that's what the 13 arrows represent. But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hand were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Amen. We can go on. Even by the God of thy Father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above. Blessings of the deep that lieth under blessings of the beast and of the womb. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitor until the utmost bound of the over everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. And we know Joseph's son, Ephraim, and Manasseh gained this double portion. Ephraim is Great Britain, and Manasseh is the United States. And this is why we're showing the U.S. symbol or seal. Because each one of these symbols have a meaning. So you can call this a seal, a symbol, a sign, okay? So, our symbol is the eagle. And notice it's the bald eagle, which is one of the strongest that climbs the highest. Yet, when you go up here, you'll see a cloud over the eagle's head. And inside, you'll see 12 stars represent the shield 
of David. The cloud represents, remember, God, when he set them free from Pharaoh, the, the Hebrew was freed from Pharaoh, he guarded them by day, by a cloud, and by night, by fire. And that's what those clouds represent. So the bow represents military power of might of, or the mighty archer. And that's what this insignia means. The next insignia we want to observe, if I can get it up, the presidential seal insignia and you can't see it but in the presidential seal insignia the letter there's 13 letters in that writing there and the difference you can see there's more stars around it which represents the 50th state now 13 was the first the original colony but 13 also represents um the tribe of Israel. And why do we say that? Because I know you're saying it's with only 12. But if all actuality, when Simeon and Levi was actually made not to have an inheritance, they were supposed to intermingle with their brothers. And that's how they received their inheritance. Um, so Jacob end up adopting Ephraim and Manasseh, which took Simeon and Levite's place. And if you add them together, it becomes 13 in total. So you'll see 13 clouds on the top of the eagle's head. And underneath, you'll see 13 stars representing, no, um, this is, I believe, nine, 12, representing the, um, the 12th tribe in the presidential seal. So, our seal, though we, I cannot say whether we knew at the time that we were making this seal, that it was going to really represent Israel. But as you can see here, this seal goes along with the blessing of Joseph. When you put the two together and combine the two, as you're reading the blessing that Jacob gave Joseph, it correlates to this symbol. And that's basically what I'm going to talk about in each one of the Lord's tribe. We're going to talk about what brings us to the conclusion that Ephraim is Great Britain and Manasseh is the USA. Okay? God lets us know in the Bible, although they are scattered and even people would say that they don't know who they are, God knows who they are, and he has a way, supernatural way, of letting us know. Whether we realize it consciously, unconsciously, he lets us know who we are. And again, Jacob had 12 sons, and all of his sons were not Caucasian. They were men of color. Amen. So there are original 
black semitics and i want i needed to point that out original black semitic meaning men and women that were not grafted in to abraham um through adoption they were they actually have israel blood in their veins amen okay so next we want to talk about number so that would be two the third we're going to talk about france and france is seen as Reuben. And when you read um, <clears throat> when you read Jacob's prophecy to Reuben, then you can correlate, which is in Genesis forty nine, three to four, it correlates to what we're saying, what you see in France. You know, back um, in the Bible, the Reubenites refused to fight with Deborah and Barak when Deborah and Barak went out to fight. And again, you see where France refused to assist the United States when it came to the Nazis. They want it to be neutral. And like most of the time they do, they'll stay neutral until, guess what, something hits home. So, can we understand why uh, France was under attack a few months ago and we didn't jump to their aid? And yes, they got upset with us, but France have been... They have had that personality, that type of personality in the past. As long as nobody's bothering me, um, I don't want to get in it. And they, then they get in, get involved when they see that um, their territory is threatened. So they're unstable as water and unpredictable. And that's what was prophesied to Reuben. Reuben tries to take his birthright from Ephraim, which is Great Britain. That happened. And you can find this in the Bible in Deuteronomy 33 and 6. So Reuben shows pride in his culture and his food. He's sexual and moral. You know, people in France are loose when it comes to their sexuality. Next, we're going to talk about Zebulon. Zebulon. And when we think about Zebulon, we think about the Netherlands. In Genesis 49, 13. And Deuteronomy 33 is where you'll find Moses' prophecy. But Genesis 49, 13 is Jacob's promise or Israel's promise to his son Zebulun. He's thought of as a haven, a shelter, a safe place. But he's also a gateway. He, he has harbors and ports. And there's a, a, a great gateway called the Neverland. You know, the Zubalin are seafaring men. There's a busy seaport in Europe. Um, the Dutch and also in um, Zebulon's uh, prophecy it says he would suck treasure from out of the sand. Well, the Dutch is known for the shell company. Why? Because that great port that they have, they sucked out oil from the sea.
and they border unto Zion. Means tight. And Sidon is loose in sexual practices. So let's go to number five, which is Issachar. And Issachar is Finley in Genesis forty nine fifteen. Two burdens between Switzerland. I mean between Finland. You have Switzerland and you have Russia. Okay? Those are the two burdens that Jacob prophesied. And the tribe name is Tuchari. T-U-C-H-A-R-I. They migrated to Tula or Tola. One name is a car son. Okay? Tola. And the Tokchari composite of words of Tola and Issachar. It's a Russian city in Tulsa, which migrates through Russia. Remember, Russia ruled Finland from 1899 to 1905. In the World War One, the Finns joined Germany and Russia. Also, Jacob prophesied that they were going to be servants under tribute. Out of everyone that owed money from World War One and Two, Finland is the only country that paid their debt, completely paid their debt, especially in World War II. They owe no one. So they work hard like donkeys. They carry a heavy burden and they have a heavy burden to pay. And that is enough for them. And now we're going to move on to that, that right there with Issachar. Six is Dan. Dan is considered island, the Irish. You'll find them in Genesis 49, 16 through 17. And if you looked on the map of Europe, you could see that serpent trail. That's the migration path. Of Dane. Okay. Anywhere Dan goes, he puts his name on it. So Dan, which means God is my judge, think highly of his name. Okay. Think about Denmark, Denmark, and Judges 517. Dane lived in ships so they're considered seafaring and sea raiders they're Danish okay and they can travel from port to port remember um, again I know I pointed this out before that King David combined forces with the Phoenicians and the Phoenicians had ships, big ships. They knew how to sail from here to there. So the Israelites sailed the seas. Okay? And we're just finding now archaeological studies or findings are showing us different writings where the Phoenicians stopped at this port and they leave little writings. But remember, the Phoenicians even though they were supposed to accept Israel's God as God, they kept their God. So it was like they used both their God and Israel's God. The Greek called them Danes. The Egyptian called them Deuna and Zakari. Riders in the pack. 
Amen. Next, we have Gad or Gate. German descent or German came out of Gad or Gate. And in Germany, there's some in Syrian. So not every German is a descendant of Israel. Jewish child land. Some Germans are Gad in Genesis 49, 19. They're called Germans or Germany part of thin tribe they migrated through the Caucasus mountains towards Europe in huge numbers. The truth shall overcome, but he shall overcome at last is what was prophesied to him. Lion tracing off the crown is Dane's symbol. Germany has a lot of peaceful um, people. They have two nature. They have um, one is peaceful and the other one is warlike, ready to fight. And Eastern Germans, they are not Israelites. Simeon and Levi are scattered among every nation. And that is definitely what um, Jacob prophesied for both of them. But we will talk about them a little bit later on. Number eight is Asher. Now Asher is considered South Africa. Genesis 49 and 20. Royal Dentities was prophesied to Asher. The bread to be fat, meaning prosperous. He shall be prosperous and give kings delight. And what does that mean? He will give kings delight. Kings delight means gold. He will give kings gold. South Africa was rich in gold and diamonds. Amen. They're called Dubar. 90% of the world diamonds are found in South Africa. And 50% of the world's gold reserve is found in South Africa. And the people in South Africa, the original black people, have nothing. Okay because the Caucasians went in there and just took what they wanted and made slaves of the people. And when they tried to fight back, what they call being a rebel or being riotous, they got put in jail like Nelson Mandela. Amen. The mixture of British and Dutch people Zebulon and Asher lived side by side in ancient Israel. So there's a mixture there. And again, we just want to point out, South Africa is known for its mining nature. The bulk, like Boaz, Bozar, or Africana were mixtures of Britain and Dutch people. Next we have Natalie in Genesis 49, 21. And Nephthali or the Huns is where they migrated to. And then Natalia, the easy to trace, the entire tribe was captive before the fall of Samaria. Amen. And if you notice, they pretty much keep their names similar. 
They were um, prophesied by Jacob. Hind is a female deer. And so when you think of a hind, H-I-N, which means female deer, think about it being let loose and being wild. You know, being in heat and wild. Sexually immoral is more a better term. Number 10, Benjamin, Norway. Genesis 49, 27, you go to the prophecy. The prophecy coincides with the history of the Norwegians. And Judges 19, 21, that's chapter 19 and chapter 21, read that. 600 men of Israel was left after a battle. And these 600 men were Benjamites from the tribe of Benjamin. They lived in Asia Minor. The apostle Paul was a Benjamite. And they are tedious fighters, much like the Vikings. The Huns. Last but not least, Simeon and Levite. So the eleventh and the twelfth is Simeon and Levite, which is in forty-nine five through seven. We know neither one of us them inherit land. Levite is scattered, and Simeon both are scattered among their brethren, and they're known for their anger. Their anger is rage because they got enraged and went and slew um, Dinah's husband-to-be because he raped her. And so they really had high moral, um, a high moral value system for their sister being raped by a man. And, and I admired them for that because they knew how she felt. Remember, she was their sister out of the twelve. Those two loved their sister, their baby sister. So both of them slew a man, and they have no nation. They're scattered among others. Simeon is more warlike nature, quick to fight, and Levi doesn't mind sacrificing. So this is why they became priests. Joseph put Simeon in prison, if you can remember that. In Second Chronicles 1 and 5, 9, and 34, 6, Ephraim and Manasseh was joined. along with Simeon. Simeon arrived in Britain in 720 BC. The Jews and Spartans had a fascinating correspondence in the second century BC during a revolt with the Maccabees. And, you know, you have to read the Maccabees Bible. Um, book 1, 12th chapter, 5 through 18. To find that eight information. Also, 12, 19 to 23. The Spartan, remember the Spartan, they did a movie in the Spartan talking about the, three, the 300 men. Their fighting skills remind you of Gideon and his 300 men. Now, in talking about the Levites, we have to also realize that Levites had musical talent, or they had, are known for their musical talent. So, you may recognize a Levite by their musical talent, and it's 
very interesting to note, if I never said this before, I'm going to say it now. Singers and musicians who love the Lord, you find them high in worship. They can have a talent to sing, but when they are high in worship, meaning when God or the Holy Spirit is on their lives, when they have the anointing, you are drawn to Christ. Most churches that have those type of spiritual gifted worshipers in their church draw men and women to them because of those spiritual um, worshipers. Okay. And basically that's all I want to say. You can find anything you're looking for online. So I say to you, complete the research because I'm just giving you an overview today. Father, we thank you for this message. Bless your people in the peace of Jerusalem. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen.